So uh, what is your name and what are you best known for? My name is Shannon Wheeler and I started drawing a comic strip called Too Much Coffee Man in, I guess, 1990. And that's what I've become best known for. The uh, last couple of years I've been doing some New Yorker cartoons and I drew a graphic novel about the oil spill and a kid's book, which isn't really for kids. And how did you get into comics? I, when I was a little kid, it's how I learned how to read, was looking at the pictures and wanting to figure out what they were saying. And so, as a kid, I thought it was just magic. And I just, it, it just it amazed me, like Snoopy's Doghouse, that there's all these um, things that were happening inside of this small square that, that you couldn't even see. It was just implied. It was just a little drawing and it was really simple, but it evoked just these worlds and that it just made me want to do that I thought if I could do that I would have this insight into the meaning of life or the, you know all reality I thought it was this key to understanding things um, but that, yeah and then and then in college um, the college newspaper was paying ten dollars a day for cartoons and I thought that's a good way to make money so it sucked me back in and talk about the formats that you work in with Too Much Coffee Man. You had worked in uh, zines, you had done it in strips, you had done it in comics. Uh, was there an advantage to any one of those formats, did you find? Uh, an advantage to any of the formats? Well, with, yeah, with Too Much Coffee Man, I, it's really like, what, what is the opportunity? So, it was talking to Gilbert Shelton, who did a comic strip called uh, Fabulous Furry Freak Brothers, and he told me that he used to do these one-page strips, and then what he would do is, is he would do them for the newspaper, so he'd print them there, and then he'd collect them together and do a comic book of all the one-page comics, and then he would take all the comic books and put those together and put together a book. So he said that you would get to be paid like four times for the one piece of work, and so that's, I, I was like, oh, that's brilliant. So I started drawing Too Much Coffee Man as a newspaper, like an alternative newspaper comic strip. So it was a single page format. And then started doing comic books, you know, out of that. I just followed Gilbert. And what was your experience with self-publishing? How did that come about? I, I approached, I approached self-publishing like I'm getting in the ring with people that are bigger and stronger and smarter than myself so I need to be clever is what I felt I mean you know you're, you're competing with Marvel and DC and you're competing with people you know I was 20 and uh, competing with people that are older and, and have done it for a long time so we needed to figure out ways to make the stuff that we did more noticeable and that's and that in part is why I did too much coffee man because it was a way to have a character that was really elevated, high concept. Um, and then we did, the, my buddies and I, that we were all doing comics together, we just started doing um, gimmicks. Like we, we took our comic book and we shot it with a gun because we wanted to be noticed and we wanted to be written about. And yeah, so self publishing. It was just like, how do we do this and compete with Batman, right? Like that's our. That's our rival is Batman. So, so we're gonna do something Batman can't do. We're gonna, we're gonna do something that a committee would never agree upon. We're gonna take our comics and put a gun to it and shoot everyone. And then the story is related to the whole, so that the whole goes through. And then the, there, you turn the page and there's the hole in the comic, and the story is relating to that hole. And you know that's how we competed, and that was our self-publishing. You know. And then you found yourself with Dark Horse. How did that come about? It was trying to get into the book market where finally having a number of comic books and saying how do I put these together and do a book and back then especially the book market was just very closed um, they didn't want independent books that borders um, Barnes and Nobles um, Walden books um, Upstart Crow, all these, they wanted you if you had four more titles and then they're returnable. So I, I could not do book publishing the way I could do comic book publishing. So it was a natural fit with Dark Horse to say, hey, why don't you do the graphic novels um, and collect these comics together. And it was great because they were also able to check my spelling and tell me when something was really terrible and like, hey, this makes no sense. He's 
you know, on one page he has a cape, and then the next page, where's the cape? And I'm like, oh crap, I forgot to draw it. That's why it's not in there. Like, here, just let me fix that right now. And it was good. It's been a good partnership with Dark Horse. They've been really good to me. And how about the opera? How did that come about? That, doing an opera, um, writing it was a, a friend of the family's who writes operas, and he actually won an Emmy for an opera he wrote, and he bugged me for years to, he's like, oh, we should do it too much coffee me an opera, and finally, I, I always thought it was a bad idea, like, that I just could not imagine too much coffee man in an opera and I thought how do you sell an opera like where do you how do you put it on it, was, it just it was like too hard but then I had a dream where I saw her too much coffee man singing and I thought oh this is really interesting I want to do this so I wrote him uh, he said write a libretto and I wrote a little poem a little rhyming poem about love um, being in love with love like that you fall in love with the idea of love rather than loving somebody. And at the time I thought it was really clever because I thought nobody's done like a love song to love. Um, but I, I, you know, it's been done all over the place. Everybody started to say, oh yeah, I saw this, it's done by, you know, 1910, oh, okay. Um, but his, the music that he wrote to it, it fit so well. I mean, it, it is like he understood the humor, he understood the jokes, and, and he put pauses in the music so that I, I, it was just hearing it and reading it, I was like, wow, this guy, this could really work. And it just, in my head, I thought, this has such potential. I, it's an opportunity, I felt, to work with somebody with a lot of talent, and I shouldn't pass it up. Um, so you, we wrote it, and it was about two years later. I mean, we worked on it just on and off on weekends or whatever, shooting emails back and forth. Um, and it was just when I met this one woman, um, I'd just been broken up with by, I, I don't know, it was, I was broken hearted and I, I go to this um, art show, it's my friend's art show, and it turned out the girl's a, a ballet dancer and I thought the art show was going to be in this little bar, it turned out the bar was inside the Portland Center of Performing Arts where there were posters of her, the girl that had broken up with me the week before, like all over the walls. And then my art, my friend's art was underneath it all, and so I was just like, oh my, like this is just unbelievable. And so I just started drinking wine, you know, like that's how I was gonna cope, right? Like, um, and the woman I met there, um, named Robin Williams, she's like, I said, you know, oh, what do you do? And she said, oh, I, I manage this place. Uh, it's a Portland Center Performing Arts, the biggest performance, and it's where the symphony performs, the ballet performs. Um, and I and I was just drunk enough to say, oh, I just wrote an opera. Like, I would never do that. Like, that's just not, you know, it was asinine. But um, she's like, oh, really? And so she gave me her card and said, yeah, I'd love to hear it, which I'm sure is a lie. But, you know, she gave me the card. And then the next day, I was like, like, what is this? Oh, yeah. And I thought, wait, this is, and I realized, like, hey, this is an opportunity. I could follow up on this. Um, and I was depressed, and so I just had this manic energy. So I started to send her, um, every week I sent her more stuff. Like, every Monday I would send her a package with costume designs, um, set designs, I hired musicians, I recorded songs, I sent her a CD of the songs. So every week it was a new little set of packages of like, oh, this is what it would look like, this is what it would sound like, um, this is what the stage would be like. And I was just doing all the design work, and at first she's like, oh, this is interesting. And then slowly she's like, this guy could do this. And so she got behind it and made it happen. I mean, it was it was really, it, it was just, it was luck. I mean, it was a lot of luck. It was hard work, but it was, you know, I was in the right place at the right time and with really good people, you know, like the, everybody that I started to work with just happened to be really talented and I lucked out on that.